If your hips are feeling all locked up and crappy and nothing really seems to work long term, this video is for you. A big issue I see with a lot of the common fixes on the internet for tight hips is that they're predominantly based around stretching and they don't educate the hip how to actually move better with the rest of the body. See, it's important to first be able to open up space within the hip itself so we have more freedom of movement, but what do we do with that space once we actually have it? That's the question and what I think a lot of people miss. In this video today, I'm gonna help you identify what is going on with your hips and what you need to do to properly address your individual limitations. Now, depending on many factors like your posture and whatever individual hip joint morphology or shape of your hip that you have, you will have a certain bias towards either internal or external rotation of your hip. Internal rotation being your femur rotating in like this, external rotation being your femur rotated out like that. Now you're going to be limited in one more than the other. Now everyone's going to be limited in one more than the other. I'm going to give you several tests to identify which one you're more limited in. If you're looking for a more thorough explanation of how these restrictions build up over time and develop, I have a lot of content on my YouTube channel that can help with that. These videos in particular are the ones I would recommend to check out and they're gonna give you a pretty detailed understanding of exactly what's going on. You can check those out for more. Now we're going to use several different tests here to identify what's going on. But let's start with the easiest one first, which would be just basic internal and external rotation of your hip. So you can just lay on your back, pull one knee back to 90 degrees of knee and hip bend, and then making sure that your femur stays in place you're going to rotate around the axis of your knee. So it's important that you're not having your femur dump in and out to the side or anything. It's staying nice and in line. The next thing we're going to do is a straight leg raise test. This is a test for internal rotation of your hip. When you straighten out your knee and you lock out your knee, this is called the screw home mechanism of your knee. You bias your femur towards an internally rotated position. And this is maximized more and more beyond a about 45 degrees of a straight leg raise. So once you get beyond that level, you will need to access more and more internal rotation up to 90 degrees. And you would want to compare that from side to side as well. So generally, if you have somewhere between a 70 to 90 degree straight leg raise, that is one indication you have decent internal rotation. The last test we're going to do is hip flexion. Now, because of this bent knee position, this is more of an external rotation assessment. And because we need to go deeper, closer to our knee, this will also require more external rotation. Same thing applies as the straight leg raise test here. Just keep your knee bent and not using your hands, pull it back to your chest, stopping once you feel like your hips are going to roll from side to side or dump under you, or you feel a restriction in your hip somewhere. Generally speaking, if you're getting beyond about 110 degrees of hip flexion, your external rotation is probably decent. So we have two different tests for both internal and external rotation. What's important to consider is that these things should make sense and they should align. If you have good femoral internal rotation, then your straight leg raise should probably be pretty good. So if I had 30 degrees of hip internal rotation, I should probably have somewhere around a 70, 80 degree straight leg raise. That would make sense. But if I had, for example, 10 degrees of internal rotation and a 90 degree straight leg raise, well, then that tells me that I am cheating one of those assessments and I'm probably cheating the assessment that's better. So if I used a straight leg raise as that example of the one that's way better, but that doesn't make sense given my femoral internal rotation, then what's probably happening is I'm unconsciously moving through my low back in the straight leg raise. And generally the lighter your legs are, the lighter your limbs are, the easier it is for you to cheat these assessments like straight leg raise and hip flexion. If I had pretty much full hip flexion, which would be 120 degrees, then I would probably hope that my femoral external rotation is somewhere around 40 degrees. If it's not, then that probably means that I'm cheating that hip flexion test somehow and I should recheck how I'm doing it or in the case of you can't really tell if you're cheating it or not, which does happen you're probably best off sticking with the measurement that's worse and using that as your indication of where you're really at. So for example, again, if I had 
10 degrees of hip external rotation, but a ton of hip flexion, I would just go off of that 10 degrees of femoral external rotation. If you're limited below those okay measurements, that probably tells you that you have a decent restriction in your ability to access hip internal and external rotation. Now keep in mind that we're going to be using these assessments as retest measures to know if we're making an objective change that is going to help your hips. You should be able to do these exercises and retest and feel better going through them. Now there's a couple of caveats to that. The first thing is that the heavier and more tissue you have around your limbs, the harder it is for you to experience a very significant change in range of motion when going through something like a straight leg raise or hip flexion. Just because you have more stuff in the way, it's going to be harder for you to see a 20 degree change in one of these assessments. So keep in mind that these changes that are positive are going to be relative to you. But many people, if you have a big restriction in your hip, like let's say your hip feels blocked in femoral internal rotation, or hip flexion, then you should be able to notice a significant decrease in that block if you're doing the right interventions and you're executing them properly. Now, the first thing that really helps many people is to simply just open up space within the hips. There are two things we're gonna do to help accomplish this. And I would do this regardless of whether you're limited in internal or external rotation. What you wanna do is lay on your side and put a little towel roll underneath the bottom side, what we call iliac crest. And then you can either just lay here and chill and hang out, or you can place a little kettlebell on top here, or you can have a partner very gently push down on the very top of your hip right here. What this is going to do is it's going to compress your pelvis laterally, which is going to open up stuff on the back side of your hips and that's going to decompress your pelvis and open up more space for your femur to be able to slide back within the hip socket, which is oftentimes a huge restriction in many people. So I would do this on each side, or if one side is painful or uncomfortable, don't go on that side, go the other side, and just hang out here for about one to two minutes. Again, chill, relax, and breathing to help relax our body and decompress that space. Now we're gonna very gently ramp things up and do a little bit of rolling and dynamic activity to help open up that space a little bit more. Now this needs to be as chill as possible. So support your head like you're taking a nap and then the other shoulder is just hanging out. It's not dumped forward, it's just in line with the hip right there. And then all you're gonna do is very gently exhale through your mouth as you bring that top knee forward. But you're only gonna to go to the point where you start to feel like your low back is about to move. Don't go to the point where it actually moves. Stop at that point and then come back very gently as you inhale through your nose. Exhale, go further, and then inhale, come back. Super chill, that's all it is. It should be all hip movement pretty much. Now, as a regression, if this is too much hip flexion, you can bring your knees down a little bit lower and you can do it in this position right here. Same thing applies though, just make sure your low back isn't moving. Again, I would do this regardless of your limitation. This generally just helps open up space because what's happening here is the top side is moving into more external rotation as the femur slides forward, as your knee goes forward, and the bottom side is going to more internal rotation as that side is being rolled back. Finally, remember that last missing piece is people don't educate their body how to actually move in and out of internal and external rotation. So that way their hip actually works with the rest of their body like their shin, their knee, and their foot, and also the upper body as well. So if you had a limitation in hip external rotation, usually more of a squatty-like position is going to be better for you to be able to improve external rotation and have that align with external rotation from the hip down to the foot. So this is one exercise I would recommend that you try. What we're gonna to do to set up here is get our heels elevated and we're going to get about somewhere between five to 10 to 15 degrees, potentially maximally, of a ramp. And you wanna make sure that whatever you're using ideally will allow your whole foot to be flat on that ramp. You don't wanna necessarily use something that is going to just jam your toes into the ground like that because that's not going to give us the foot position we're optimally looking for here. But if that's all you can do, it's not the end of the world, it's just that this is more ideal. Now, we want to have our hips a little bit wider than hip width. And if it's comfortable for you, keep your knees in line with your toes. If you need to turn them, turn them just a tiny bit out, that's okay, but you don't really wanna go more than about 10 degrees of turning out. So we're just gonna line Trevor up right there, that looks good. We're gonna feel the foot contacts of the inner heel, the first metatarsal head, and the fifth metatarsal head. We wanna maintain those evenly throughout this entire exercise and making sure that we're keeping at least 50% of our weight in our heels. 
Now we have a little bit of a setup here and a support with this bar so that way Trevor has something to hold on to. This could be a desk, it could be whatever is comfortable here, but it needs to be pretty low at about waist height, if not a little bit lower than that. So Trevor is going to make sure that he's got a stacked head over his rib cage, over his pelvis. So it might help Trevor to feel like he's nice and tall through his posture, and then he's gonna exhale through his mouth. He's gonna feel his ribs come down without his sternum depressing. So he wants to stay tall, but he's got a little bit of a rib cage down stacked position. His eyes are looking straight ahead. Now all he's gonna do is feel those foot pressures, keeping his weight, again, more so in the heels, and he's gonna squat down and he's gonna keep his knees in line with his toes, not shoving his knees out against the resistance of that band, just keeping him in line. And he's gonna squat a little bit lower, right about there. So if we were to consider angles right here, Trevor is at about 45-ish, maybe 60 degrees max of hip flexion. We don't wanna go much lower than that because this is gonna keep us biased towards a position of external rotation. So Trevor's maintaining those ribs down, again, without slouching, and he's keeping his eyes straight ahead. Notice how his pelvis is neutral. If it was a bowl of water, it's not spilling out the front or the back excessively. It's nice and neutral with the floor right here. Now, many people have a tendency to overly flex or extend, so you may wanna film yourself and make sure that you are keeping that pelvis nice and neutral. This looks really good right here should look pretty much exactly like that. The biggest mistake people are gonna make on this is that they're going to overextend their upper back too. So you wanna make sure that you're getting a little bit of a reach or protraction through your shoulders without your sternum depressing again. And all Trevor's gonna do is sit here and breathe in through his nose, out through his mouth, making sure he's keeping his weight mostly in his heels without losing those fifth, fifth and first metatarsal heads keeping the knees in line with the toes. The last thing to make sure you definitely look out here is don't squeeze your glutes actively. If you do that, you're probably gonna tuck under too much like this. So you wanna make sure, again, your pelvis is neutral, good, and you're just allowing your knees to stay in line with your toes there. Everything else will take care of itself. You might feel a little bit of tension in the side of your hips, but that's all it should be. It shouldn't be an active contraction of your glutes to where you feel like you're squeezing them. If you like this type of approach, check out my beginner body restoration program. It's designed for anyone to be able to do, and it starts with easy exercises to help open up space just like we did today, but it's much more progressed and there's a lot more different types of exercises. But there's also a lot of considerations for asymmetry. So many people will have noticed today that one side was better at internal rotation, maybe the other side was better at external rotation. And that is going to be taken into account within this program as well. So check it out. I'm gonna link it down below in the description. If you had a limitation and internal rotation, more hinge-like positions, more of like a deadlift action, pushes your hips back and helps improve that internal rotation. So if you had a restriction in internal rotation, after doing these exercises, try this to help tie everything together and really improve that final key piece, which is integrating it with the rest of your body. What we're gonna do is get a pretty long foam roller, ideally up against a wall, perfectly in level with the knee of the stance leg we're gonna be using right here. And we have the other foot about in line with the back of the stance leg foot. So we have these back toes in line with the heel, if not very slightly behind that, I wouldn't go much more than that. So that'll allow us to keep our weight maximally on the stance leg here. So Trevor's gonna get nice and tall within his posture. And he's gonna feel on the stance leg foot, his inner heel and his first metatarsal head on that side without losing his outside foot. So he needs to make sure he doesn't lose contact to that fifth metatarsal head either, but his weight is in those first two portions that I mentioned. And now he's going to place his right hand on his left hip, and he's gonna place his left hand on the back of his left glute right there. And this is gonna give him some support. He's gonna exhale through his mouth, staying tall within his posture. That's gonna make sure his rib cage comes down. Now he's stacked with his head over his ribs, over his pelvis. And he's not gonna exhale so much or depress his sternum. He wants to stay tall, but he just wants to feel these low ribs come down. Now he's in a perfect starting position. Maintaining about five out of 10 pressure into that roller. Trevor is going to hinge at his hips and he's going to set his hips back, trying to make his butt cheek as big as possible pushing into that left hand. He's gonna stop that hinge once he feels one of two things. First, that nice stretch in the back of his hip capsule. So that'd be like a posterior hip capsule stretch. That is where he would stop. Or 
if he goes low enough to where he's gonna lose his back position. If that happens, then he's gone too low. So what you wanna imagine is that you are hinging your whole upper body together and your butt is going back in space and your chest is lowering to the floor. Where you stop will individually be different from person to person, but you wanna make sure you're feeling those foot contacts. You wanna make sure that your back knee is bending with you. But the biggest thing people are going to do to screw this up is that they're going to go into too much hip bend itself and bend this front knee and they're gonna do something like that. That's not what we're looking for here. So a really good cue is to keep your butt high in the air. So notice how this would be a good rep of Trevor. His hips are going back and he is going into more hip bend, but his knee's not really bending anymore on that stance leg. And once he feels that hip capsule stretch, he's gonna hang out here for a second and then he's gonna push through those foot contacts of the inner heel and first metatarsal head. And he's gonna stand up stopping that hip extension, that standing up process, once he feels like if he goes up any higher, his low back is going to arch or his ribs are going to flare. So let's do that one more time. Exhale, ribs down, and then just go down nice and slow and controlled until he feels a slight stretch or that he might lose his back position, pushing through those foot contacts on the way up. Perfect. The first thing to think about on this that's really important is that we need to keep our zipper turned towards that stance leg. So we don't wanna have our pelvis facing that side too much, nor do we wanna have it to where it's facing the other side. Think about just a very slight turn of your zipper towards that stance leg foot arch. And that will allow you to keep everything in line and for you to access internal rotation on this side. So you see as Trevor goes down, he's still keeping his hip just outside of his knee right here but he's not overdoing it to the point where he's spinning out of it like that. So again, like from everyone, you're probably gonna have to start pretty shallow and feel it out. You know you're doing it right when you feel that nice stretch in the back hip capsule and you have a nice alignment of everything from your head all the way down to that back pocket. It may benefit you for better form to place your opposite side of the stance leg hand on the wall and just kind of use it with a slightly bent elbow to help guide your body down on that wall right there. And that could just give you a reference for everything moving down as a whole unit as your chest lowers to the floor. I wouldn't push into the wall too, too much. I would just use it as a guide. I would recommend doing this at least once per day. Two sets of each of the exercises in the order that was presented today. Something else you may want to take into account is that you might need to upgrade your shoes. I find shoes are a huge game changer for so many different types of people with hip issues. Check out this video. I'm gonna link it down below too.